You're watching clips, the best moments from our live streams every Monday and Friday. Don't miss out. Watch it. The celebrity endorsements. Is I recognize there's Brian Cranston. Hey, Brian. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Where are you? Brian Cranston. I hear Chris Rock is in the house. Chris, where are you? Chris Rock is in the house. Ben Stiller, Jennifer Lopez, Tracy Ellis Ross. Jennifer Lopez, where are you, Jennifer? Yes! So there you have, you got all, all the celebrities chiming in. Everyone's happy, everyone's love, all that stuff. Any thoughts right now, uh, uh, Derek? Well, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a bunch of Hollywood people that are going to support you know, you know, the Democrats and they're going to support, you know, Kamala Harris. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, not surprising, you know, not surprising at all. You know, this is their political slant, you know, from Hollywood, you know, mm. uh, Hollywood elites that are not connected in any way to the common, normal human people, you know, regular Americans in this country. They're not connected. They're, they're disconnected. They live in a bubble and they're going to rock with what their political ideology is inside that bubble, which is 1000 percent Democrat. And it's been that way for a while. OK, let's hear let's hear what they have to say. What do you want to say? Why did you want to join us here tonight? I'm just smiling from ear to ear, Oprah. I have never felt this much joy and optimism in a campaign in a long time. So I, I'm just uh, so appreciative of Kamala to be able to bring back that sense of optimism and and to squash the cynicism and the and the and the vitriol and the rancor that that just seems to be floating all around Washington. And I hope that at, that we're going to ride this wave into Washington. I'm here. I'm here to support. I can't be happier than this uh, candidate. Uh, I, I think she's going to be a terrific president. You hear that? Joy and abundance. Getting rid of the <laughs> rancor out of D.C. because Brian Cranston knows how, how politics starts because he's playing a judge. <laughs> That's how he's getting his uh, political opinions from the uh, roles that he plays. <laughs> Look, man, all of this nonsense about joy. Like, what is this nonsense about joy? Who cares about joy? Hey, I, am I getting joy because my grocery bills are going up? Why don't we talk about some policy instead of the, all of this emotional nonsense, man? Emotions are not going to do anything when it comes to getting, you know, the prices of food down, you know, and getting everybody the quote unquote opportunities that they claim to care about. These people have nothing. They Look, these people are fine. They, they have all the money in the world. They're going to be just fine. They like, let's talk about some actual policies instead of just getting these people out here spitting joy and happiness. And all. I mean, that's not going to put bread on the table, man. Well, we're so tired joyful, of this nonsense, man. Another joyful uh, celebrity, Chris Rock. Of the United States of America. We've been in the street. What do you want to say, sir? Um, I, I, I've always been a, a fan of Kamala, even back when she was a. Uh, Running for, I, I remember writing her a check when she was like the district attorney for something. Maybe it was to get out of a parking ticket or something. But I've, I've been writing her checks for a long time. And I just want to, I want to bring my daughters to the White House to meet this black woman president. Uh, <laughs> Y'all hear that, man. This is why I don't watch political stuff, man. Because it, it gets, <laughs> you came on the wrong, I, you came on the wrong day. Where the today is a political. Yeah, I, I, I guess so, man. I guess so. Uh, I mean, you heard the man. You know, it, yep. it's not about anything that's good for America. He just want. He's been writing this woman checks that he don't even know what she's been running for, why she's been running for it, it what her policies are. He, they, these cats, I guarantee you, cannot tell you anything about her other than the fact that she is a quote-unquote black woman. That is it. Or, that is know, let's, all. Let's they don't know anything else, bro. Let's just go back to what you said. They probably can't even tell you how much a dozen, uh, a dozen uh, uh, a thing of eggs. They don't know. They don't they know. Got, they got... They got people buying the food for them. They got somebody running. The, hey, go buy some food. Here's, you know, whatever, I, whatever amount you need. Put it on the card or whatever. You know, well, they, probably Again, this they probably won't get food from the same markets that we go to because, you know, they're, they're no. the high end stuff. 
Yeah, right? like, look, the one thing about um, inflation, and when inflation is going insane, is mm-hmm. that these guys are the ones that have the money to kind of withstand all of that. They can, oh yeah, I can pay a little bit more for my groceries. Right. If groceries go from a hundred bucks a cart of groceries to two hundred or three hundred dollars, no biggie. Right. All right. For us, that's a huge amount of money. For them, it's nothing. Okay. Because they're millionaires. All right. They live in gated communities. They got maids and you know butlers and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And I'm not saying that any of that makes them bad people, but it does make them kind of disconnected from the common man. They don't really understand who we are. And so it's real easy for them just to say, oh, I just want to take my little girls to the White House so I can meet a black president. And it's like, who cares about that? Like, that's why you're voting for it. That's why you're giving her money so that you can do you can have your photo op with Kamala Harris. You know, it's like, what are we talking about here? We're not talking about anything of substance. We're talking about joy and taking my kids to the White House. Like, that's what matters. When everybody else is like, I need to be able to pay bills. All right. I need to be able to set up a future for my kids, my family. We don't have that, you know. And and this is why this country has gone to hell in a handbasket, because people are voting like this. They're voting for absolutely the wrong things. Instead of voting for, you know, substance, we're voting off of emotions and off of feelings, all right? Feelings sure. is why we're voting. It's ridiculous, yep. you know? And so here we are, all right, struggling. One more, one more, and then we'll take the celebrities out. One more. I heard you were on the comics for Kamala, and that. And so I want to know, were all the comics for Kamala trying to outdo each other with jokes for Kamala when you were on for comics for Kamala? <laughs> they were, and I, I didn't outdo anyone. I was probably the least <laughs> fun of all the comics. Um, but it was, it was really, I mean, it was great though, because everybody was so energized and I mean, I got to go to the the convention and, and see, uh, and see her speech, which was just incredible and feeling that energy, uh, you know, feeling kind of going from, um, uh, a stop Trump mode into a go Kamala mode, the people starting to, you know, really hear what's going on. And, um, you know, I have a, I have a 22 year old daughter, 19 year old son is going to be voting in his first election. My daughter's, you know, her reproductive rights are incredibly important. Um, you know, uh, standing up for. Thank you, Ben. Well, I mean, honestly, that's the first time that anyone's mentioned any, anything sort of like a, an issue like policy or something, yeah. a policy, which is reproductive rights, which are now states. It's with the state. It's with your state, right? So there's Have now, I believe, 20 states that have banned, uh, you know, uh, the as yeah. far as abortions um, and uh, as far as other reproductive rights, you know. Uh, so, yeah, man, I mean. Well, I mean, but you're, like you said, man, it's a state's issue. It should be a state's issue. That's kind of the way, in my opinion, how you fix a lot of the, you know, these major, you know, problems where we have division in this country. It's like, look, bring it as close to the people. All right. Let's get it back as close to the people as we can. Don't have some overarching federal mandate that says everybody has mm-hmm. to do it a certain way when it comes to certain things. Now, there's certain things that you can definitely have the federal government say, hey, uh, you're not going to have slavery anymore. OK, that's just like across the board everywhere yeah. in the country. We're not yeah. going to have that. But, you know, for certain things, it's like, look, these are contentious issues. Hey, go down to the state level. The federal government's going to stay out of it and then let the people kind of move where they need to move. So if you live in this part of the country here are, or, or if you live in this state, mm-hmm. here's our rules. You don't like these rules. Hey, you got 49 other states to choose from and find a place that fits perfectly for you and your mm-hmm. family and how you want to be. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's actually sensible. That's a sensible way to handle this. Bring it back to the states and let the states decide. And then you can go and vote in your local elections and figure out what you're going to do in your state. Leave everybody else's state to do what they want to do in their state. And you can just vote with your feet. You could just move where you need to move. There you go. Okay. Well, and that's, that's to me the is thing. the best way to handle this whole situation with stuff like abortion. And know? more majority of Americans, men and women are with you on that. That's why the, that's why he, he, he did what he did. Yeah. Some people don't yeah. like it. You guys didn't win. I'm sorry. Yeah. It goes to the States. Go, go, go fight, go fight for your rights on, on, on you know, on the state level. Thank you.